Thank you for coming to KMS Performance. I'm Kelly McLean and today we're going to go over the wet slug kit. So right over here what we have is we have two kits available. We have a kit for the Rhino 660 and we have a kit for the Rhino 700. The Rhino 660s and the 700s actually have an internal wet clutch. This clutch actually works by the shoes will expand during higher RPMs. They'll put tension on an internal drum and then be able to transfer that force to go through the shaft to your clutch that sits on the outside with the roller weights and the grease and all that stuff. What we've done at KMS Performance is we found a way to make this clutch more efficient by adding in brass weights. These weights here will allow the Rhino to actually provide more grip through this clutch to make this clutch last longer as well as provide more horsepower to the rear wheels. The original design for the system came in 2004. We built a supercharged Rhino with nitrous and we kept going through the wet clutch. Now, we had to come up with a solution to make sure that the wet clutch was going to live for the customer's application. Uh, we tried a couple different methods. We tried with lightening the springs that go in between the shoes, um, but we ultimately found that if we added more weight to the shoes, we were able to transfer more power to the vehicle. Um, this vehicle was producing right around 80 horsepower, and with a stock wet clutch, we would only get one pass down the street, and then the wet clutch would disintegrate. But when we went in and we actually um, added brass to the shoes, we were able to um, get full seasons out of the wet clutch without failure. So it's quite a dramatic change, you know, as far as the longevity of the wet clutch itself. Um, and it was a high, high horsepower application uh, for this particular product. However, it falls all the way back down to guys who are running just stalkers, four seaters, heavy load applications, big tires. It just makes the wet clutch work better. Uh, to provide more t power to those rear wheels as well as actually you know increase the lifespan of that wet clutch and seeing these things are right around $350 for a wet clutch itself um, it's a pretty good investment while you're in there replacing it to go ahead and add these weights to make sure that that clutch is going to last a very very long time for your vehicle so what we're going to do now is we're going to go right through an install on the actual wet clutch itself, just to show you how we drop this thing in here and a little bit better explanation of the mechanism going inside. Let's go over here. <laughs> here we have a Rhino 660 wet clutch. It's used, but it'll work perfect for this demonstration. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna go ahead and remove this plate here with all these E-clips. We're gonna install the brass weights and then we're gonna reinstall this plate here for assembly back into the vehicle. The first step is getting it apart. Now what I'll do is I'll put a vise right here in the corner to compress this plate to remove these E-clips. Most people should use safety glasses, but I'm a risk taker. So I'll remove two E-clips at a time, and then I'll move to another corner. And by the way, it's also nice to have a magnet handy, because when these things fly off, they really fly off, like that, see? So I was better off using my finger. It's also important to know that if you have a younger child, they work perfect for finding those E-clips. <laughs> now we're ready to remove the top plate. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the top plate, and then there's a giant spring, and then there's this plate that goes on the underside. Now you'll see that there are holes in the shoes from the factory. What we do is we go ahead and fill these holes with the brass. The brass is actually tapered. So what I do is I'll try to stick it in one way and try to stick it in the other way and you'll discover which size, which size is the larger side. You want to go the smaller side in. So just go ahead and put the smaller side in. Okay, now if they're a little stubborn, what I can do is I can go back over to the vise and kind of just lightly press these in just a little bit. So I'm just using the vise, finish securing the slugs, just make sure they're all the way nice and deep into the shoes. Oh yeah. So that's the finished assembly. Now we're ready to go ahead and put on the base plate, the spring plate, the retainer plate, and the eclipse. 
So we do the base plate. You want to make sure that the lip faces up. So there's the lip, and that faces up. Now we have a spring washer. We want to make sure that the conical side is up. And then we have a retainer plate. Now this retainer plate is going to be fighting the spring. So what we need to do is we need to go back over to the vise, compress this to allow us to install the, the E-clips over here. So we're going back in the vise and just do the corner technique a little bit. Now you'll notice E-clips will have a sharp side and a smooth side. You want to be sharp side out. So sharp side needs to be on this side and that's the smooth side. So you want to be sharp side like this. Also, you'll notice that there's actually a little metal tab that sits like that. That's so you can center your E-clip. So you don't want to be installing the E-clip from this side. You want to be installing it from this side. We go ahead and install our E-clip just like so. It's not super important, but you can actually kind of line it up if you want to feel good about yourself. Do a good job. Always do a good job. And same thing. We go all the way around. And then we can center it up if we like. That's pretty. Me? Now at this point we would go ahead and we install this clip, this clip, and this clip. And that finishes the assembly of the wet clutch. It's now ready to install into the Rhino 660 or Rhino 700 depending on your application. Hello. Food for thought, Rhino 660's, the nut that actually holds this down inside the motor is right hand thread. The Rhino 700, however, is left hand thread. So whenever you're removing this thing, you need to take caution to make sure that you're using like an impact gun or a breaker bar or whatever to get that nut loose that you're going the right direction because you can either damage the crankshaft or you can actually strip out the center of the nut. So Rhino 700 is left hand, Rhino 660 is right hand. Thanks for, <laughs> Thanks for coming to KMS. Uh, I hope this made a lot of sense to you. Have a great day.